What's going on? I've got a really good one for you guys today. The 2022 Road Glide Special in Gunship Gray. Now this is the only Road Glide Special I've seen so far. We just got these 2022s today. I don't need to see any more. The Gunship Gray is going to be my favorite color for the Road Glide Special this year. I'm calling it now. There's some other really good colors. The White Sand Pearl, close second probably. However, the Gunship Gray. This just does it for me, especially in the black finish. Now, before we jump into the video, I do want to give thanks not only to Tim's Harley Davidson, but the customer that actually owns this bike. This thing came off the truck. Dude was here to pick it up like that. However, I got lucky in that he had seen the channel. He's a fan of the channel. And he said, hey, I'll leave that bike with you guys. If you want to review it, put it on the channel. Just give me half the money. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, but I do want to thank him. He didn't want to be named, but I know you're watching. Thank you for trusting me with this bike and letting us review it today on the channel. So I know I probably drove the point home in the intro, but I have to say it again. This gunship gray is such a good color. Now looking at it in person and looking at it on this camera at the same time, looks a little bit lighter. Hopefully it translates to you guys. This is a good color. Like I said, with the vivid black, this is going to be tough to beat for 2022. Give you a quick walk around of this bike before we get started. Again, shout out to the customer that left this one with me so that I could put it on the channel. We do have two other road glides here. However, both of those are standards. So to be able to review the special, he left this one. Thanks for that. So we're gonna start things off in the cockpit. What you would see if you were riding this bike yourself. I feel like that's a really good place to start things off. Gauges, both gonna be analog. You do have some digital information there. Pull that up really quickly for you. So as you can see, you have your warning lights. So you're gonna have your miles on this bike. Trip A, trip B, how many miles still empty? front tire pressure, rear tire pressure. Guys, check your tire pressure anytime you're gonna ride, especially if you buy a Road Glide special like this or a bike that gives you the information without you having to put the tire gauge on there like I have to do. Check your tire pressure, make sure it's where it needs to be. And then back to your mileage on the bike. So a lot of guys like these analog gauges. I like them too because you have this big infotainment system here. It's gonna give you your music. It's gonna give you your navigation. You can take phone calls. You can do all kind of stuff on this bike. Now, I am leaned forward a good bit to be able to touch this screen. However, I'm kind of a neat freak and that you see where I've touched it already leaves a fingerprint. We're gonna solve both of those problems by having to reach and fingerprints right down here so anything you need to do with the screen you can control with this button here and then this button right here that's going to be all you need to do everything on that screen that you would do with the touch screen all your controls are standard harley controls the same ones they've been running for a good while if it ain't broke don't fix it one thing I do want to point out that will be different to non-Harley riders is your turn signal. I know that's a small thing, but it, it's different if you're not used to Harleys. Turn signals are on each side of the handlebar. Clearly, right on your right side, left on the left side. All the metric bikes I've ever ridden, they're usually on this left side. They're on the same switch and you just go left for left, right for right. Not the case on the Harley Davidson. While we're talking about controls, We'll point out cable clutch. Harley went back to that in 2021. A lot of guys felt a certain kind of way about that. I know a lot of the old school guys prefer that cable clutch. They prefer that feel, that feedback, the adjustability, where some guys like myself, after I just praised the cable clutch for all the things I had going for it, I like the hydraulic clutch. Why, I don't know, I agree. The cable feels better, but for some reason, I've just always been a hydraulic clutch fan. But I know that's in the minority, so a lot of you will be happy to see still running the cable clutch for 2022. Now you'll see with the Road Glide, you do get two big nice speakers up in the front. 
these Harley speakers have come a long way. These things sound really good out of the box. I know a lot of guys are adding speakers to the bag lids. Doesn't come with the Rogue Glide. You have to get like a, a limited or a Rogue Glide limited to get that option to get rear speakers rather, not in the saddlebags. But for me, I found that these work great. Clearly, I'm not riding as a passenger, but I have asked passengers since making videos last year. When I've got a passenger on, I say, hey, can you hear the music? They say, yeah, and I've got a few more bars to turn it up. So props to Harley for their sound on these bikes. If it's been a while since you've seen the Road Glide, most people will be familiar with this vent right here in the front that closes. I've noticed if it's open, it kicks the air perfectly over the top of my helmet, whereas if I shut it, kind of makes my head bobble just a little bit. Uh, you can shut it if it's raining, but I never found that much water. I've ridden the Street Glide in a lot more rain than the Road Glide, but I never really found there to be a significant amount of water coming through there. Not enough for me to shut it. On the older model road glides, you could close these vents here on the side, which I call the nostrils. They took that away, I believe, in 21. But again, I've never found a reason to close them. So to me, not really a big deal there. One of the things I really love about these road glides are these compartments. Now they're not huge, they're just big enough to put all the stuff that you wouldn't want in your pockets your keys, your wallet, uh, pocket knife, cell phone, things like that. Plenty of room for the, the small important stuff that you need. You do have one on each side. That one has a USB port, so you can plug your phone directly into the bike. You can Bluetooth it into the bike, but if you plug it in, it's gonna charge. I found it's not the fastest charger in the world, but it does keep your battery from running down so much. You also have the little 12 volt plug right here if you want to plug something and charge something in that way. Your gas tank still going to be the big six gallon tank. Plenty of range with that. They kept your badge the same. I'm a big fan of that badge. The old school bar and shield. Clean, simple. Looks good on the bike. And I like that it's an actual physical badge, not just the paint. Moving around to the Wait, what? What? <laughs> so if you've watched this channel, uh, any in the past, you probably know what I'm pointing at right now or what I'm showing you guys on camera. This bugs me to no end. Last year, I said in 2021, this year, here we are a year later, 2022, we're still running halogen turn signals, Harley Davidson. Give these people LED turn signals. It's not going to cost you that much more. And I just, dude, it, it blows my mind. One of the things I was hoping for this year was gonna be an inverted front end on these touring bikes. That didn't happen. There were some photos that leak that maybe show a version of the Road Glide with the inverted front end. I'm skeptical. I'm very skeptical, but We'll see. Uh, we're, we're only a couple days out now from the unveiling of whatever else Harley's rolling out, and time will tell. So up front, dual disc brakes, dual headlights, that shark fairing that you either love or hate. Let me know which camp you're in. Over the years, I'm warming up to this thing more and more. I still think I'm probably a street glide guy, but I've really warmed up to that front end. Moving on around to the kickstand side, you see they're still running the low profile engine guard on the special models. The standard model didn't get that this year. I was surprised. I thought maybe they would offer it. It looks significantly better. For those that aren't sure what I'm talking about, here's a 22 Road Glide standard, and it's got that big engine guard on there. I've always taken them off. I just I do not like that big one, but I always said if I got one of the newer styles, I may leave it on. To me, it's worth it just in case you end up tipping your bike over. Hopefully that's going to help the majority of the damage and it doesn't look bad. Your seat's going to be the same seat Harley's been doing for a while and I can confidently say I have logged 
thousands and thousands and thousands of miles on these stock Harley seats. And honestly, they're not bad, at least not for the driver. I can't testify to the passenger, but that's a pretty big, pretty plush passenger pillion. So it does give you a little bit of support there. Now here's one thing I wanna talk about. So if you're familiar with the Harley Davidson world, you know that you need docking hardware on the back of these bikes to run a passenger backrest, to put a tour pack, to put a luggage rack, basically anything you wanna mount on the back of this bike, you wanna do the quick detach. Now there's ways to do it without, but if you wanna take, take your accessory on and off, you're gonna need tools, whereas you just have that nice quick detach. I feel like the majority of people with these bikes are gonna to wanna to end up riding a passenger and it's so much nicer if you put a backrest. And I know some people don't like the look of the backrest, so when they don't have the passenger, they wanna pop it off. But I feel like with so many people putting accessories on the back of these bikes, Harley should finally start including those. Um, I can't remember off the top of my head right now, so I'll look it up and throw it on the screen when I edit this video, give you the price of that docking hardware, but I feel like it would be really nice at the premium price tag these bikes carry if you put the docking hardware on there. Now I know there is a difference. You can get black, you can get chrome, but if the bike comes in black, give them black. If it comes in chrome, give them chrome. If they wanna spend their own money and change it, by all means. You are rocking the stretched bags on the back of this bike. My personal preference, I don't like the stretch, but I know for a fact, based on me making that comment in the past, I'm in the minority. A lot of guys really like that stretched bag. So you don't really get any more room. It's literally just the corner of the bag is gonna be the only difference. But if you're gonna run a dual exhaust setup, it does look nice with those cutouts. I normally run a two into one, so mine ends up looking funny because then you have a cutout on this side with nothing coming out. That's why I kind of prefer the look of the standard bag. I'll show you guys really quickly since we have one right here handy. The non-stretched bag, that's what you get. I just, I, I'm drawn to that look more. Maybe it's the performance bagger thing, maybe it's the exhaust thing. Let me know which one you like, stretch bags or standard bags. Now I wanna talk about the engine. It's not anything new. The 114 Milwaukee 8 that we all know we're familiar with. Your special comes with the 114. Your standard comes with the 107. It's really convenient to have that thing sitting there. Uh, I did, this is not supposed to be a comparison, but it's nice for you guys to kind of see what you're gonna get. But back to what I was saying, you have the 114. If you watch the channel, you watch my other videos, you may have seen where I was speculating that the 107 would go away for this year, which means the 114 would have probably went down to the standard models. And then this one, I expected to get a 117. This bike absolutely, positively does not need a 117, but would have been really cool if they did it. I'm also hoping that that's a next year thing. Since it didn't happen this year, pushing for it next year, like I said, you don't need it. I would encourage stage one. You've already got the high flow filter, throw some exhaust, which most people are gonna do for sound, but do a full exhaust. So do your head pipe, do a tuner on this bike, let it breathe a little more. It's gonna give you a little bit more power and it's probably gonna put you Maybe not quite where the 117 would with factory exhaust and whatnot, but it's going to be really, really close. All right, guys, that's it. That's all I have for this Road Glide special because nothing has really changed other than the paint options from 21 to 22. However, if you're looking to get a Road Glide, you've kind of been out of the Harley world for a while, or you're just getting into the Harley world, if you have any questions at all about this bike, please by all means leave me a comment i'd be more than happy to answer it i just figured we would keep this video short and sweet since nothing has changed from the 21 to the 22 model 
other than this amazing color that we're looking at right here. All right, guys, that's it. That's the full review of the 2022 Road Glide Special in the Gunship Gray colorway. Now, I've always kind of leaned towards the Street Glide. However, after spending some time with this Road Glide, particularly in this color, I think that might be changing. If you like the video enough to stick around to this point, please consider giving it a thumbs up. It helps me a lot more than you think with the algorithm. Also, if you're not subscribed, please consider doing so. That helps as well. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one.